Back in February 2019, I had the awesome opportunity to head out to Samsung's launch event of the Galaxy S10 series. During a quick hands-on session before the actual event, it didn't take long to tell that this phone was going to be special. Sure enough, in my review of the S10 Plus in March of that year, I stated that this phone checked pretty much every box there is to check, which moved it incredibly close to being a perfect phone. Now obviously, no phone is perfect, but using this one again a year and a half later, I think I was pretty on point with that take. So the S10 Plus burst onto the scene early that year with a number of refinements and adjustments from 2018's Galaxy S9 Plus. The hardware got a nice upgrade with a more professional, boxy, and much flashier polished aluminum frame. And it also boasted one of the best displays on a smartphone. In fact, this was the best display on a smartphone for some time, and not just because it was the first major release of the year. For one thing, Samsung was able to squeeze out a good amount of bezel while avoiding an ugly notch in favor of a larger display and this hole punch cutout. This being a laser cut hole in an OLED panel, which I believe hadn't been done yet in a smartphone. Not only that, this was also the first smartphone display to be HDR10 Plus certified. Oh, and who could forget Samsung's first ultrasonic fingerprint reader. So yes, this display was special in its own way, and for some, it was the star of the show. And of course, it still looks amazing today. So what's it like using the S10 Plus a year and a half later? Well. It's actually been great. This phone came packed with specs built to last, and that Snapdragon 855 has been pretty awesome. Things have been quick and smooth, aside from a small number of stutters after turning it on for the first time in a while, but other than that, performance has been just fine. Again, just like the Note 10 Plus, I wasn't expecting the phone to slow down or take any sort of significant performance hit in this amount of time, but I, I know, we all know Samsung phone track records from years prior. Battery life, however, did take a little bit of a hit, and that's to be expected. I did use the heck out of this phone after all. During my revisit, I was able to make it through a full day of moderate use on a single charge, but with heavier power user type usage, I did end up having to plug it in or toss it on a wireless charger a bit earlier in the day than normal. I didn't experience anything crazy though, no battery drains, nothing like that, it wasn't bad at all. As expected, I did miss higher refresh rates, but again, just like with the Note 10, it didn't take me too long to adjust back to 60Hz. But man, this display is so crisp. I love it. Yes, even though it is curved. It gets nice and bright, it's super colorful of course, and it holds up very well to what we have nowadays. I mean, it's not like we've completely moved on from camera cutouts or anything. One thing I really enjoyed was how much the community embraced the cutout. While a lot of people did end up hating on it, calling it a giant dead pixel and whatnot, developers and artists came together to make the best out of it and we ended up getting some really cool stuff like these wallpapers and this battery level indicator that I still use. And speaking of still using something, there's the headphone jack. <laughs> I remember during the hands-on session before the phone's announcement, a Samsung rep was asked about the headphone jack, and the rep basically said there was no point in them removing it. Yeah, I know. How times have changed. So did I end up using this headphone jack during my revisit? No, 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 I didn't. I did a year and a half ago. I mean, I obviously still like the idea of having it there for the rare occasions that I would need it. But again, that rarely happens for me. I do wish that current smartphones still had it though, and I know a lot of people feel that same way. Now getting to the cameras real quick, this is clearly a more modest array than what we have now. Nothing crazy here. Pictures still hold up today as well, but you can definitely see the refinements made in this year's Samsung phone cameras, mainly when it comes to overexposure and low light photography. But even with how quickly cameras improve in smartphones, these cameras aren't anything to sneeze at, and they won't be anytime soon, especially when you consider what this phone goes for now. And it's worth mentioning that software updates over time have indeed helped things out a bit, so they are still quite good by today's standards.
There are other things worth mentioning, like the speakers. They sound pretty good in comparison to what we have now. Gotta love stereo speakers. The haptics are solid. They're not quite as tight as what we get with the Note 10 Plus, but they're still good. The ultrasonic fingerprint reader ended up getting better over time, and it is much better than it was before thanks to those software updates. I quickly remembered how I wasn't a fan of how high the power button was placed, and I'm still not a fan of that to be honest. Oh, and I still have the Bixby button mapped to open up Google Assistant when pressed. That was a great thing to do for sure. And honestly, everything else runs and works as it should. My S10 Plus is running Android 10 with One UI 2.5, which as of this video, my Note 10 Plus has yet to receive as it's still on 2.1. But of course, with 2.5, the S10 gets some new stuff like wireless deck support. Nearby Share came along too. The Pro Video Mode got some nice add-ons and more. It's good stuff. Overall, my revisit with the S10 Plus was very good. With a year and a half's worth of smartphones to compete with on its resume, I can confidently say that this phone is worth a pickup in 2020 as we move on to 2021, especially with those price drops. Do a little hunting online and you'll find refurbished or mint condition S10 Pluses right around the $500 mark and sometimes even less than that. And don't forget, the S10e and regular S10 are out there, as well as the S10 5G. Now, I will say that this price range is very, very competitive right now, and it's only going to continue to get more competitive. So keep that in mind. But if you can find one for the right price, picking one up would not be a bad idea at all. With a spec sheet like this, excellent, attractive hardware, a number of software updates to back it up, Oh, and a headphone jack too, it might be hard to pass up. The value is there. The S10 Plus was, and still is, a great phone. It really pushed the needle forward, and in some ways, it helped lay out the foundation for where smartphones are right now. So what do you think of the S10 Plus in 2020? Are you still using one or any of the others in the lineup? Let us know and let's talk about it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave it a like and subscribe to the Andrew Police channel if you're new and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified of new uploads. It's been Zach, I'll talk to you guys later and thank you so much for watching.